Uh, good morning, it's London Call, it's Matt. How are you all? I hope you're all holding up well. The weather's, you know, you're not falling apart at the seams like I was a couple of days ago. Hitting the booze. <laughs> I'm getting over it now. Yeah, um, so far, what's going on in London then? Well, yeah, Boris has been taken into intensive care, our Prime Minister. But apparently he's not so bad, he's not on a full ventilator, he's just been um, CPAC, which is kind of helping him breathe. Please God, he'll be all right. We're all hoping, you know, that he was nothing really too serious. He'll be out soon. We definitely need him. He's been a, you know, he's a great, great prime minister, in my opinion. Um, apart from that, they're getting tougher on the clampdown because a lot of people disobeyed the rules again at the weekend. Some of the parks have been closed. Uh, government aren't that happy with some people. Um, I posted a few videos of the parks, but that was filmed before the coronavirus shut down so that's for future use if people want to you can go out for one walk a day still so i don't see a problem with that um if i have a look outside my window you can have a look into the london window see what's going on there's a few cars about people obviously doing their exercise it's very quiet still i mean it's a nice day today the sun shines out um the other day sunday i looked out and there was just so many cars people were driving so a lot of people are using their cars and really breaking the curfew really and apparently bikes there's a lot of bikes that's another way around it i suppose if you want to go out it's not really round but you're moving quickly the one thing people did say was about joggers and i found that when you're over the park it's just some of them are arrogant bastards they won't move out of the way and they'll run on their path and just come straight at you and they won't move and they'll breathe all over you if you don't see them coming from behind they just come up really close which is really out of order because actually they're breathing heavily you can't see them coming and they can breathe all over they can't they, don't, they won't take the effort to run two meters around people that's something that needs to be looked at because that is really annoying you. when i need to kick one up the arse when he came past the other day he was lucky he barged past me and hit my shoulder i was really fucking angry i've got to say sorry about that um oh, God, the police are over there they're driving the buses are going still mostly empty look but there's been some bus drivers die so that's not good either as well as old ties. so you know we should thank them for what they're doing i mean really it's, they should be paid danger money cab drivers have died some on their balcony over there you know so i think people, now boris is sick i mean it's a bit of a shock can't expect your prime minister to get sick you know but hopefully but praise god he'll be okay here on you can see the buses are going by. It's a lovely day. You want to be out there, really. It's an amazing the amount of buses that are running, considering. You know. But yeah. This is our. Um, this is Keir Starmer, the Labour leader. You just knew you voted in. In the world. Talking about Boris. So I know he'll be well looked after. Uh, but people are clearly He's in St. Thomas's, which is a really um, I know the business hospital. of government will continue. I was in touch with the Foreign Secretary. The Labour, uh, Labour leader. And I want to say Tory. that the Labour Party will act in the national interest. Exactly. And that's why I've Bad offered to act constructively with the government and support them where that's the so right thing to do points. and push them further where we need to do it. And that was Keir Starmer. And, uh, you know, there have been so many messages of good will happen mm. there from all over the world uh, for the Prime Minister. If you want to keep up to date um, we'll have, with all of that and the implications for government etc, you can watch BBC News throughout the day. We'll and be back here tomorrow as well. Obviously. Yes, there is no uh, nice sort of news. official update yet on uh, what the condition of the Prime Minister is overnight, but there have been um, two sources Please close to the Prime Minister right. who said there's been no change in yeah. his condition, so he's still in intensive care in St Thomas's Hospital this uh, morning. We're making new friends on breakfast, aren't we? Oh, yeah. Um, you might remember the Marsh family, made famous across the world for their self-isolation parody <laughs> of Les Miserables, One Day More. They are back with their latest and their final song. We'll catch up with them in a moment. They're on their sofa, ready to talk to us, but first, let's have a little look.
Okay. Let's have another look out the window because we can't do much else. There's nothing else to bloody do but look out the window. Well, I've got some decorating to do. I've got a bit of um, electrical sockets to change. I'm still in my pyjamas. It's about, what, nine o'clock now. Yeah. Is it Monty the dog? Is it? That's a lorry. That's a um, yeah, yeah. sort of lorry. Is that? Okay, I'm, I'm glad. I'm glad that's not on camera. Actually, um, what so, was that? Uh, the follow-up to your Let's have a flip through the channels and see what's going on in the news. Much watched uh, song which we saw last week on BBC Breakfast. Um, ben, we'll start with you. Did you feel a bit of pressure as a, as a family? A run for so many people were waiting television. for the, the the difficult second song, if you like. Exactly, the difficult second viral video. No, no, we did, and we we thought a lot about it, and we just wanted to do one more song, really, to say thank you, and just try and change the tone a little bit, because uh, with with the platform that we've had and all the amazing positivity, we just wanted to encourage people, if if possible. Continence, though. But a little bit of we is not going to stop me being me. New tenor silhouette noir, just like underwear, but just like tenor. I'm here to remind you to visit Top Cashback, to get cash back on top of your online shop for top fashion, on top takeaways, top notch hotels, cash back on top tools for that top coat. To top it off, it's easy. And members get an average of over 300 pounds cash back from thousands of top brands. So join the millions of members already getting cash back on top of their online shop with a top trusted, top paying, top cash back website. Top cash back. Right, shall I pop the kettle on? Oh yeah, go on. Nice cup of tea. What a day. BBC Parliament. Yeah, one or two people came back, so I'm feeling a bit... Professor Neil Ferguson, a massive global infectious disease analyzer. I've recognised and that bit of the country is a little bit ahead of other bits, which got less seeding. Uh, but there is a transition everywhere. I mean, I talked to my parents at the weekend in Mid Wales, which is the remotest rural of Mid Wales, I should say, and they've seen a case in their local community hospital. So it is very widely distributed. Mm, thank you. And coming to that across the that modelling of the whole country, yes, we are intending to roll out models across the whole of uh, Europe the, and allow policymakers to both to use our model um, uh, in different settings and indeed allow we'll be releasing the model as open source code in the next week or so. Exit committees, if you like, on working out how they're going to uh, take their countries out of lockdown. The Austrians have done so, the Germans are talking about it. Are we at that stage? Do we have any senior minister in charge of the exit strategy, the next stage? Well, well uh, we are looking collect. Let's have a look at Al Jazeera, England. I haven't looked at it. Before the invasion of 2014, Crimea was a part of another country, Ukraine, reformed when the Soviet Union broke up into separate states. But many Russians, including their president, Vladimir Putin, were unhappy with this. Russia is determined to keep its alleged abuse of human rights. And taken by surprise by the news that the Prime Minister has been taken into intensive care uh, last uh, night, uh, particularly uh, since there had been a news conference only a few hours before. Uh, was yeah, the government worrying, levelling with the nation at those briefings, telling them what the situation was? Uh, yeah, and, and was it uh, as taken by surprise? Yes, we were. Um, the, uh, the briefing that uh, was given at, uh, at five o'clock uh, was given at a, uh, a time when uh, we didn't know about the deterioration in the Prime Minister's condition. Um, we were informed subsequently um, uh, the Prime Minister was admitted to intensive care at seven o'clock, um, and that information wasn't uh, 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 given to to us in government, to those in the cabinet, um, until just before eight o'clock. God, he's all right. Given his importance to the nation, do you think, with hindsight, he could yes, have been looked Thomas after is, yeah. better? Well, uh, I think the Prime Minister followed uh, medical advice, uh, and he was uh, uh, at all times operating with a strict back diary um, and uh, following the. Uh, the guidance that he was being given by his uh, his doctors, um, and I think now 
all of us just pray and hope that the Prime Minister will recover well. Mm -hmm. um, Adam, if you'll forgive me, um, yeah. I, I have to head off uh, now and take part in the, uh, another government um, uh, telephone call. Oh, I do, I, I do yeah, understand you have that responsibility. Just one more thing. Uh, yes, of course. Uh, uh, Ma Michael Gove has had to leave us to go to that important meeting. Uh, thank you very much indeed to him for joining us. Well, this is uh, Sky News. Uh, let's take a look now at the dramatic events leading up to the Prime Minister's hospitalisation last night. Yes. Uh, Boris Johnson had been fronting the government's daily press conferences. And then on Monday, the 23rd of March, he announced uh, the UK lockdown. The following Friday, 27th of March, you he announced well, that he had tested talk. positive for COVID-19 and he went into isolation in number 11 Downing Street. The Prime Minister was last seen in public applauding, applauding the NHS from his flat on Thursday evening. Yeah, uh, but with his symptoms continuing, he was admitted to hospital on Sunday night. Last night, as we were hearing, at around 7pm, he was moved into wow. intensive care in St Thomas's Hospital. Well, in the last hour, the Foreign Secretary, Dominic Raab, uh, the uh, First Secretary of State, entered uh, Number 10 Downing Street, and Sky's Kay Burley asked him how the Prime Minister's faring. I think he'll have oh, Good to, uh, morning. You're live on Skype at the moment. How's the Prime Minister? He's in very good hands. He's in very good hands. Do you know how he is? How are you feeling about the challenge of Hudson? So we just heard... Well, we can speak now to our political correspondent, Kate McCann, uh, who is in Westminster. And Kate, obviously, everyone, as Michael Gove was saying, been caught on the hop by this uh, uh, terrible news about the Prime Minister's health. Uh, what can we expect today? That's right, Adam. Before the Prime Minister was admitted to intensive care, he nominated Dominic Raab, who's first Secretary of State, to effectively deputise for him. So Mr yeah. Raab will now lead that COVID-19 meeting this morning. It's come to be known as a war cabinet, if you like. It's staffed by some of the most senior people around Boris Johnson's cabinet table, including the Chancellor Rishi Sunak, the Health Secretary Matt Hancock and, of course, Michael Gove too. And they will really form the crucial part of the decision-making arm of government over the next couple of days. Now, we don't know Boris Johnson's current status. We don't know how long he's going to be in, in, in intensive care or in hospital. But what we do know is that there are some really crucial decisions that need to be made over the course of this week, including about lockdown and how and when to lift it. Now, Boris Johnson had said originally it would be reviewed in about a week's time, but there are some concerns that if the government doesn't communicate clearly before Easter weekend when we expect oh, yeah. the virus might peak people, people may think that it's okay to start going out and about again and clearly listening to some of the scientific experts over the course of the last couple of days that isn't going to be the case the question then becomes how do you lift the lockdown we know there's some tension between the Treasury about the economic impact and but, uh, between the Health Secretary too about the impact of the virus on the NHS and trying to avoid a second peak, making sure that the NHS can manage the number of people heading into intensive well, care. There is also a question about testing because there are some suggestions again. from a professor at Oxford University saying that it will take well, around a month happen. to get a reliable antibody test and that really was seen as one of the crucial elements of lifting the lockdown to measure how many people have had the virus and how many and he may have immunity. So some big challenges for that, that group of senior cabinet ministers over the next couple of days. Dominic Raab is essentially in control. There is some suggestion that if Boris Johnson is up to it, he will have a hand wow. in how decisions are made. But we know that government operates with collective responsibility. The cabinet also has a hand in how decisions are made overall. And listening to Michael Gove this morning, it's clear that all cabinet ministers will have a say in what happens next. It won't necessarily be down to just one man, Dominic Raab. Thank you uh, very much indeed, Kate McCann there in Westminster. Uh, so uh, what's actually going on with the Prime Minister? Intensive care units are specialist wards providing treatment for the very ill. Uh, they contain sophisticated monitoring equipment and are used by specially trained staff. There's normally one nurse for every one or two patients. Uh, those patients stay in critical care beds, which can be moved into many positions depending on the condition of the patient. The priority is to maintain blood oxygen levels, <coughs> we don't want because to without it, a kidneys, liver and heart wow. will fail. Jeez. For COVID-19 patients with breathing problems, the most important piece of equipment is the ventilator. An oxygen tube mm. helps the patient breathe. 
If it's placed in the mouth or nose, it's called an endotracheal tube or an ET tube. Putting the tube in is called intubation. And the tube can also be fed through a small cut in the throat. That is called a tracheostomy. Wow. No thanks. Another way to administer oxygen is to use continuous positive airway pressure, or CPAP uh, for short. That uses a tight face mask, which covers the patient's mouth and nose. If the face mask is too uncomfortable, staff might use a transparent helmet that fits oh. over the head like a bubble. Each patient is also attached to a monitor which tracks heart rate, blood pressure and oxygen levels. The patient may also be on a drip to provide food, medicine and water. There are many more pieces of equipment used in intensive care units, but for many people who get the disease, uh, hospital treatment will not be needed. Well, we can get more about the uh, specialist care the Prime Minister okay, is getting. Anyway. Joining me now is the intensive okay. care consultant, uh, Dr. Thanks Carl Wilman. Uh, uh, just very interesting much information. For the information. If you're abroad, you might not see our news and stuff. Us. Even if you do, you get can't catch up with it. Um, you know, so basically just a little snippet of what's going on in London. I'll give you another look out the window. Still quiet. Anyway, thanks for watching. Please click on the, the subscribe button. This should be on the right hand side. I hope I'm pointing to the right hand side. If you like, give it a like because it helps the channel and I can get more videos up for you. Anyway, sign off. Have a good day. Um, be safe. Okay, bye. Uh, uh, staff and uh, equipment, we, we can use that if, 